so here we are again and this time we're discussing something that's been asked a lot of us recently which is what are the differences between the top three Yamaha models that was to say the 62 the 875 and the Custom Z which you just heard a little clip of a moment ago you know we all know about the the sort of logical sequencing of Yamaha models where you've got the 280 the 480 uh, the 62 and then it's on to the custom instruments um, but perhaps there's a little bit more mystery in terms of what you're getting with the 82 versus the 875 and actually how they differ from the 62. Mm. Um, this is so the 62 here. We've got the 62 here. I yep. might have just muddled them there. They look the same from here. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose starting with the 62 because it's uh, you know such a popular talked about saxophone. Mm. Only the other day we were doing a little review comparing it with uh, the, the Yanni AW01. And I think we sort of concluded, I've always felt this, but with the 62, it's, um, it's tonally wise anyway, it, it's a real sort of blank canvas. It's a really, um, it's a sound that you just cannot criticize. Yeah. It's just a very nice all round sound. Yeah, you and can, quite thick in its tonal core and you can kind of put you, your own sound. Yeah, you can, it. yeah, exactly. You can build, build your own sound nicely from it, from the ground up on yeah. this sax. Yeah, and it, just the way it's designed as well, you know, like the ergonomics, yeah. Um, it's got a solid build. You can't really criticise sort of. No, any it's so reliable. You, you don't. You rarely see any of them coming back into the workshop with any issues because it's like you open it out of the box and it's ready to go. There you go. So that's your starting point with the sixty-two. So we all know the saxophone. Um, but what are we getting with the custom instruments? Um, they've made little uh, tweaks in terms of their labelling over the years. Yamaha have so the current. Um, naming is 82Z and 875EX and so I've got the 82Z here which you just heard me play a little bit on <coughs> and largely speaking it carries a lot of the same kind of um, design elements as the, the 62 there's not a whole load going on that's different but I will point to um, a couple of um, obvious things to point out first of all it has a, a custom V1 neck um, now this is a hand finished neck and it has a fairly wide taper compared to your average neck if you like and certainly a slightly wider taper, bore taper, than the standard issue neck that comes with the 62. Mm. Um, so I think the 62 neck these days is just labelled 62. Yeah, 62. Yeah. Used, they used to actually experiment with the G1 neck which had a wider um, bore on earlier um, yeah, 62 designs. But the, the current design is this 62 neck, which has a slightly narrower taper and just gives you a, a little bit more of a uniform sound. Mm. It, the sound doesn't open up as much and give you sort of as many harmonics, yeah. you may say, as what you get with this one, where the, yeah. the taper is wider, so the sound opens up a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. I think you can, when you get, uh, say, younger players who are maybe doing their kind of their grade eight or whatnot, <clears throat> it might be easier for them to be on this kind of instrument because it is naturally a little bit more free blown because of that boring yeah. of the neck. And perhaps more forgiving as well yeah, in definitely. terms of the exactly. intonation. Yeah. Because one of the things that I think Yamaha um, struggled with before where they used this G1 neck which had an even wider bore over and above the V1 uh, and as I said they put the G1 on the 62 was that slightly younger players struggled with the intonation. You know, mm. If you play with a slightly kind of tighter throat structure for example if you go high uh, and you have that type of throat structure, you're going to go sharp. It's not yeah. going to work for you. Whereas a more experienced player with that control here can bring that pitch down as well as get the sort of open qualities um, that you're naturally going to get from the G1 neck. So the V1 came in and it was like the compromise neck where it still has that sort of open taper that you get with the G1. It's the but best not of to both the same worlds. Degree. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that really works for their more advanced instruments. So this, this V1 neck... Um, yeah, really sort of appeals to that, uh, you know, more professional level players. Um, but then this slightly more compromised neck here still has a great sound, but just, uh, yeah, allows those sort of intermediate players to cope a, a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so that's the sort of neck side of things. But yeah. otherwise... Moving down. Yeah, moving down the instrument, um, it's got metal <coughs> pad reflectors. Yes, and that plays a massive part on how much projection and how bright the sax will actually be. Um, Hence the the powerful comment at the beginning of the video because it was it was like yeah almost took my head off in a way right okay um, yeah. not in a bad way of course it it can be tamed though because of the neck yeah. Um, but yeah going back to the resonators uh, on this one here of course it is you've got your plastic ones yeah 
you won't be able to see it through the camera, but yeah, they are plastic on here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think okay. like some of the other other brands like become quite popular having the uh, the metal resonators as well, just to get that added kick to the yeah. sound. Yeah, um, top end Yannis, for example. Yeah, you get that kick with those top bronze yeah. models. Yeah, it does make a big difference, doesn't it? Mm. Um, I mean, some of the ergonomics that um, I've uh, noticed when playing this and just reminding myself, just having a little warm up. Um, we've got, and, and this is probably worthwhile bringing in the 875 yeah. actually, because the difference in the ergonomics and some of these side keys on the AT2Z compared to the 875 are quite marked. So, yeah. should we just sort of do a side Can we by do side that? comparison? Should we go, here? Are we, which way are we doing? Are we going okay. for these but, side keys here? Or yeah, are we first? These, these ones here, yeah. Yeah, they, they stick out at an angle, which, um, I mean, it would be helpful, definitely. Mm. It's really pronounced, isn't yeah. it, this angle um, coming out here compared to the just more in line sort yeah, of angle nice that you've got here. There. Yeah, and th then as you flick it round, um, the shaping here is, is different. Um, this is just a bit more standard, but you yeah, seem to have... Flatter, aren't they? Yeah, more surface area. Mm. What was the comment you came up with before when we were discussing this? Um, well, I would have said... It was actually, I think it was to do more with these ones here yeah. being flat as well. Um, yeah, different shape it, to these yeah, guys. Yeah, it might be, in my opinion, I might find it a little bit easier to manoeuvre from an E-flat to a low C, if mm. you were to do so, um, purely because there's, I don't know, it's, it's easier for my little finger anyway. I'm not sure about everyone else's little fingers, but yeah, and then when you're moving up here, I, like, I, I personally like how flat it is as well. Mm. And that being said, there's, for some strange reason, I, I noticed this, the the B and the C sharp, they seem to work like in harmony. Absolutely, it's like really, really lovely on the EX. Yeah, you were pointing out these two keys just yeah. perfectly working in sync with yeah, each other as it's they great. Um, operated. Yeah, Yamaha said they'd made like, they'd updated that and mm. it is noticeable on both saxes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it just felt slightly different, uh, the Z to the 8 and 5. I mean, that, that still feels pretty good to me, but yeah. there's a, a slight drop off um, yeah, there's the, a different, almost, yeah, this one kind of, this low B actually sits yeah. a little bit underneath that C yeah. sharp, and I believe it would make it a little bit easier to access those yeah. notes. Um, yeah. But it's just little things like that that you would, that make a big difference. Mm. Actually, I'm just going to wind it back a stage, yeah. because um, I was talking about some key things such as the metal pad reflectors and the uh, neck, but also <coughs> a, a big feature that, that Yamaha is sort of proud to point out is that the, the bell on the Custom Z and the 875 as well, I believe, is a one-piece bell. So that's to say there's a single sheet which is then um, folded over, you know, to, to form the bell, as it were, and it just has one solder joint, which in the case, um, in this case here, is down here. Yeah. Um, on the 62 and saxes below it, there'll be two pieces of metal, so you'll have a solder joint here and a solder joint you can barely see behind here. Yeah. Um, and so just the idea that it's one piece of brass as opposed to two pieces of brass with two solder lines um, will add some extra resonance and play and interest in the sound. So we've got that on both custom models, sort of adding that kind of custom element. To both yeah, it's just instruments. a little bit more TLC goes into them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes a long way, absolutely. And since we've kind of already discussed the 875, really, just yeah. another kind of bore feature to mention. Yeah. Um, so the the taper is slightly less severe on the 875. It's a, a, a little bit wider, just at this point here, just below the neck receiver. But by the time it gets down to here, it's the same, same. dimensions as on the, the Custom Z. So we're only talking fractions, like a half a mil or so, I believe. Uh, but it can make a big difference in terms of the way the air flows and uh, does its thing as it, it comes down the centre. And it's something to the visible eye you just never see. But yeah. um, we did a know. we did a little experiment with the intonation as well before the cameras were rolling. Yeah. And did you find that that played a big part? Would you say behind the horn? Um, I couldn't really obviously feel it in terms of say intonation. I could hear some colouring differences yeah. in the notes. I mean, we'll get to this in a minute. We'll just mm -hmm. do a, a, an exercise where we can play on all three and see if we can hear those differences. Um, so, yeah, it's probably a good time to, to do that right now, actually. Yeah. I think we kind of Give covered a blast. All, all the basic points. So, let's move my mouthpiece to the 62. Start go there. 62, yeah. Let's and work upwards. Thank you. 
do you think? Yeah, okay, so the Yamaha 62, we'll start with that one. Um, that kind of sits in the middle, in my opinion. Um, probably other people's opinion as well. They'd agree that it's it's a little bit more balanced sounding um, in terms of whether it's going to be bright, dark, centred, mm. spread, whatever you want to say. Um, it just sits like a nice blank canvas, as we mm. mentioned. Yeah. Um, not too much colour in the sound. Nice, easy to work with and put your own twist on things. The 82Z, which you've just had a blast on there, obviously is the most powerful, once again. Um, big, bright sound. And the EX is going to have a little bit more, I, I don't know, can you use the word a bit more softer, more delicate sound? Yeah, the, the, there was a kind of Did it feel gentleness like that? in the sound. Yeah, yeah. It's, it felt very smooth to me and it felt, it, it felt like it had a kind of a nice spread, a sort of certain fatness in the sound, mm. if you like. Mm. I can see how it could appeal to classical players with the right kind of setup. Yeah. Um, just that sort of evenness in the tone. Um, whereas there's a little bit more point and spike in the sound of the 82Z. Um, yeah, sure. That's the way the sort of two sounds are differing. Kind of one's going this way and one's going that way, as you mm -hmm. say, and then this sort of 62 sits somewhere in the middle. Yeah. It's a nice way of looking at it. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it, it's amazing how bold the sound is on the Z. You really mm. do feel it. I'm, I'm sure those, I mean, I, I know we've got the bore change difference, but I'm sure those metal, metal pad reflectors, it, yeah, it, it feels like they're, they're, they're sort of kicking in when you're playing it, especially when you put a mm. bit more kind of and it's, volume I mean, they, they will come into, the, like, the, they'll have their greatest effect when you've got all the keys closed. And when you, like, finished on the low notes day, they sounded nice like, and, and rich as well mm. at the bottom. Mm. Yeah, and that will because yeah. of, be because of them too. Yeah, so there we go. Um, I think that was um, <coughs> yeah, a pretty interesting experiment, really, yeah, just definitely. to put these three up against each other, against yeah. their paces. Can you uh, pick a winner, though? Well, I, I, you know, I think it comes down to personal preference and the style that you play. Mm -hmm. Personally, for me, it would be the Z. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I do like the kind of brightness of it, but I don't find it like a bad brightness. I find that it's... Uh, you know, it's it's got all the necessary body behind it, um, and it's just a case of kind of getting to understand the character of it. Um, you know, trying to find the right reads and what have you. Not that I'm necessarily going to change my mouthpiece setup here, but I find that just having that sort of brightness that you can go to gives you something to, to drop back from in mm. terms of finding the darker sound underneath yeah. it, which is clearly available. And it can be tamed. Yeah, it can be. Mm. Um, I mean, I like the other two as well. You know, enjoyed, uh, I just sort of made a few comments on the 875 uh, to the extent where I really like that sort of, a bit more sort of a breadth of sound. I, I did enjoy that, but um, yeah, I, I do like the pokiness on, on the 82Z. What about you? Yep. I'm going to go with what you said there. I like the 82Z vest too. Yeah, us. Well, there we go. We, we've we both fallen on the same saxophone. We both like the same one. Well, it's bound to happen, isn't it? You know, it's... Uh, I would have imagined that the 875 or the Z is going to come out on top, you know, yeah. if if budget is um, no issue. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I've always been a fan on the, the Z, but it's just interesting to compare it with the 875 to really see... Um, what's going on there because I do know um, various jazz players out there who will play on an 875 we're not just saying it's it's wholeheartedly a classical instrument it's entirely about the way you play you know the mouthpiece setup and what have you um, but obviously you know this is a sort of um, scientific experiment same mouthpiece um, and you can just hear those uh, little nuances going one way or the other so so there you go all right guys um, thanks for watching and we shall see you on a future video